All right, so first off, you should know that to make boxes and other 3D shapes, you may actually want to use a tool other than Inkscape. There are box generators online that are free, and that can often be a good way to at least start with a box, and you can add your artwork to it. I'll link to a few below. The other thing is using 3D CAD may be a better option too. So something like Fusion 360, that way you can easily adjust parts to each other. But if Inkscape is the tool that you have, let's go ahead and use that. So to start off with, I am going to grab the rectangle tool on the left hand side, and I'm gonna draw a box. And I'm actually gonna change the box to be uh, one inches by one inch, because that's the size that I would like to enclose with my box. And this is gonna be an open topped box. One thing you should know when you're dimensioning things in Inkscape is that you really need to turn the stroke paint off. Watch what happens when I do that. Notice how it says width one inch by height one inch. If I click on no paint, suddenly it has changed the size and it's changed it by half of the stroke width. Lasers are actually going to cut this border, not whatever the stroke border is. So when you're dimensioning, make sure that you turn off the stroke. So I'm now gonna fix that. So it's actually one inches by one inch. And next I'm going to make a couple more boxes. So I'm gonna duplicate this with Control D, pull one off to the side, duplicate again, pull one off to the bottom, and I'm actually gonna give these names. So this one is my front view, this is my side view, and this is my bottom view. This isn't gonna be as important for this shape, and you'll see why in a little bit. But when you're trying to design things in three dimensions, it helps to view it from different sides. That way you make sure you're getting things to line up nicely. Okay, so first off, I'm going to duplicate this box, turn on some snaps, which will either be on the right-hand side or on this top bar. So first I'm going to enable snaps. I'm going to enable snapping to bounding boxes, bounding box corners, and midpoints. And now I'm going to drag this over just a little bit until it snaps on the side. And then I'm gonna change the width of this to whatever the thickness of my material is. I'm working with quarter inch plywood from one of the big box stores, which turns out is about 0.2 inches wide. Now, if I click off of this, it's not very clear where that edge is. So I'm gonna change the color of the fill to maybe something, something darker like that. One thing that you should note is that I have lowered the opacity on these. That way when I end up overlapping components, I'll still be able to see all of the components because I'll be able to see through the other ones. So next, we need to do the same thing for the bottom. So I'm gonna pull this down and I'm gonna change, now it's gonna be the height to that same 0.2. And I'll change the color again to something else maybe. Yeah, something like that. Now, of course, since this is going to be a box, this should actually stretch all the way to the other side. I'm instead just gonna pull this down until it snaps to that bottom corner. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and snap it to the other side as well. So now you can actually see where it's going to intersect with the other side on these gray bars and where it's gonna intersect with the bottom with this yellow bar. Let's deal with the bottom first because it's the simplest. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have slots on the side pieces, or on the front piece rather, that are gonna interface with tabs on the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate this and then just pull the side just a little bit to whatever size tab I would like. And then I'm gonna click and drag it and using that midpoint snap to snap it right to the middle. I'm gonna duplicate this and snap it onto the bottom box as well. And I'm gonna do this on all the sides, so I'll just duplicate this again again, but now I'm going to rotate it. So once I union all of these pieces together, the bottom is actually done. Now let's deal with these side tabs. So I'm going to treat it basically exactly the same way. I'm going to duplicate this piece. I'm going to slide it up a little bit. I'll duplicate that one. Maybe slide it down here or something to that effect. And you could get really particular about the spacing on these. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I want my box to look artisanal, so having different size joints will be interesting. Uh, and it really shows that you didn't use a box generator. But that may not be important to you. What may be important is actually getting them to match nicely. 
So these will be the tabs on this front face. But I also need to make corresponding slots to go on these faces. So let's see how that actually looks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to snap to this corner and to that corner. And I'm going to do the same on the bottom. What this does, and I'm going back to the select tool, is now I can take these two slots and lower them to the bottom just to make it easier for me to select the whole piece as well as these little pieces, duplicate the whole thing so that now I can move it over. I'm going to delete that placeholder and we'll just snap this in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete the things we don't need over here. So I probably don't need that placeholder side piece. I don't need these two pieces anymore. But I need this other side to basically be the mirror image of it. So I'll delete that. And there we go. Now, I also need to make the tabs for the bottom. Because right now, if I just remove this, obviously I don't have what I'm looking for. So I'll take this, hold shift. And let's make sure that this is on top. So we'll raise it to the top. Hold shift to select both of them. Click on path and select difference which will cut away that bottom tab. So now I've got a shape that should fit into other shapes. And I'm going to go ahead and union these together. So now I have just one shape. Now it's not the prettiest of shapes. And by the way, we don't need this side piece because we're going to have all of the sides be the same. And that's why we made it where the tabs on the right side had to match the slots on the left side. Okay, and now let's do the same thing for the bottom. We'll union them together. And I like to double check whenever I do these union commands just to make sure that I don't have any empty spaces. Sometimes when you try to union together things that just touch on an edge, it leaves an infinitesimally small space and then the laser's gonna try and cut that as well. I don't see that here and you would see it if there was such a space. So now I'm pretty much done, but I'll do a little couple little checks. So first, I want to duplicate this and just make sure that I can actually snap it perfectly. This is one of the other advantages of using opaque shapes. If you had any overlap like that, you'd be able to clearly see where there was overlap. And if there were gaps, you would be able to see clear white gaps. Here, you may be able to see these really tiny gaps, uh, but those are really more artifacts of rendering. They would be much larger if they were actual problems. Let's delete that. And then let's try it with this bottom piece just to make sure that it fits nicely. And again, it fits nicely into the bottom. So let's delete that. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to cut. I recommend going ahead and turning these, getting rid of the fill, and putting adding a stroke. I usually set the stroke to the thickness of my laser just so that it looks just like it would on the real shape. This is another place where you might see that there are pieces that didn't actually connect, uh, and I'll have to make another video on how to how to deal with those. Also, you should delete these text pieces. They're not needed. I just put them in there uh, so that it was a little clearer what I was working with. And now, if you really want things to fit together nicely, you should definitely adjust for the thickness of your laser cut. So that's often called the kerf. And I have another video that I'll put up on a card here that can show you how to do that. All right, until next time.